you know, they, you know, they, my colleagues on the other side of the aisle wanted us to participate in the conversation over a, over the rules defining uh, how we were going to manage this COVID crisis. Uh, this bill does exactly that. We've had others, and they've been vetoed, and they've been you know kind of argued down. But this is a this is a conversation that certainly needs to be started. Now, what I'd like to hear is, you know, is the, uh, the other side talking about the good parts of this bill, not just what the parts they don't like. That, that's collaboration. What I'd like to hear is from the governor's office, the parts that she likes and the parts that she doesn't like, and to respond to the, uh, the idea that there are no metrics for closing, for reopening, for staying reopened. Our restaurants and our businesses need certainty. And what we talked about in, in this Economic Development Committee that, uh, that uh, uh, recommended this bill to the floor is that, is that it's not just the restaurants that, uh, that are, are dealing with uh, COVID in the, in the limited capacities and the shutdowns at, at any given notice. You know, I, I read this morning in, in one of our Capitol Press uh, reports that, uh, that we're seeing a, a, some kind of a surge in, you know, in cases again. And this causes restaurants to say, are we going to close down again? It was St. Patrick's Day last year that it, we had restaurants and bars with inventory from floor to ceiling, wall to wall, waiting for their biggest day, some of them their biggest day of the year. And they, and they were shut down. No metrics were defined. There was no presentable data to say that this had to happen. But we were all a little nervous at the time, so we went along with that. 28 days went by. We lost Easter in the restaurants. We lost Mother's Day in the restaurants. We opened up for limited capacity. Uh, we, had a, we had a case at a Harper's in East Lansing. And it, make, it made me ask the question, if we had 24 cases of food poisoning rather than 24 cases of COVID, how would the health department have handled it? And why couldn't we handle it in the same way and deal with that situation, clean it up, talk about it, and shut them down, take away their license, do what it takes to, you know, to, uh, to set a precedent, demonstrate that we're serious about this. But instead, there was a scorched earth policy based on no science, no data, no metrics that closed down uh, indoor dining around the state, including the Upper Peninsula, which at the time had two uh, hospitalizations due to COVID. Two, the entire UP, their restaurants and bars, indoor dining was shut down because of Harper's. And then at the same, with the same executive order, casinos were opened up. The uncertainty in the, with restaurants. They, then we allowed uh, limited indoor dining again, and then just a couple of days before Thanksgiving, by golly, we got closed again. And we lost the biggest day of the year for some of our restaurants. In my, in my hometown, two of the largest restaurants in the country shut down. And they lost Thanksgiving. They lost Christmas. They lost New Year's celebration. And then on February 4th, we found out kind of under the radar screen that they were extended out to March 29th after they were open to 25 percent. And then they were, a, and then, and then we were, they were open to 50 percent from one week to the next. We don't know what that means. We don't understand the metrics. We're not getting the data. We're not getting the science. We're just getting lip service. And when I asked the, a, a, when I asked the administration, what, what prevents us from closing down again? We don't know. We don't know what those metrics are. And I don't want a, a Mr. President, my restaurants to have to restock their dumpsters for a fourth time in a year because they don't understand what the governor is doing. And with that, I, I ask for support of this bill.